What's up team? I'm former United States Army Ranger Joshua Thompson. In this video, I'll be going over the truth about performance enhancing drugs in the 75th Ranger Regiment based on my own personal experience. If you guys enjoy insightful videos just like this one, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Also, if you're looking for a program to prepare for selection and you want to join a like-minded community, check out my Patreon, link in the description. So first of all, I'm going to be very blunt with you guys in this video. I think you guys know where this video is going. Steroids, among other performance enhancing drugs, are very prominent within the 75th Ranger Regiment. A lot of people were either on gear or were thinking about getting on it to include myself. First of all, performance enhancing drugs are extremely easy to get your hands on. This is especially true for SARMs. If you don't know, there's a supplement store next to Commandos right off the Fort Moore base on the first exit that sell this stuff over the counter. So it is extremely easy to get your hands on this stuff and I wouldn't be surprised if at least 30% of the base was on some sort of performance enhancing drugs. On top of that, the 75th Ranger Regiment has their own medical center, so it is very easy to just walk in there and ask one of your Ranger buddies, hey, can you take my blood so you can measure the exact dosage your body needs uh, in order to be quote unquote safer. So if you combine the factors of, it's extremely easy to get your hands on this stuff, you can get your blood drawn by your, your Ranger buddy so you can uh, have the perception that it's safer, and also the military doesn't directly test for this kind of thing, you get the recipe that many Rangers are going to be on some sort of gear. That is the reality, guys. So was I pressured to use them? Yes, I was. I was initially introduced into SARMs by an individual I was deployed with. While we were deployed, several times that we worked out together, he was putting up big numbers. So I asked him, hey dude, what do you want? Because I wanted to get to that level. I wanted to be that strong. And he told me everything. He told me he was on 20 milligrams of Osterin, uh, as well as RAD140. He also showed me the proper dosage, uh, cycling, what was the best post-cycle treatment, and even how to get my blood drawn. Now, even after all this information poured on me, I was still on the fence of uh, deciding whether or not I wanted to do it. But because the barrier of entry was super low, especially when I got back from deployment, I ended up doing a three month cycle of kind of what he did, only on a lesser dosage of 10 milligrams. And while yes, I did gain around, I wanna say 15 pounds, I went up to like 195 pounds. And that part, that part was great. But what wasn't so great was my run times were getting slower, my anxiety was starting to go through the roof. And this could be also due to the fact because I was taking like 300 milligrams of caffeine as well because of pre-workout but all the factors were adding up. My anxiety, my blood pressure was skyrocketing. And because I didn't like how slow I was getting on my runs, as well as how high my anxiety was getting, I ultimately decided it wasn't for me. Once I got through the cycle and did my post-cycle treatment, I was done and I hadn't touched that stuff since. And to reduce my anxiety even further, I cut out pre-workout as well. And that's why I continuously run to this day because it significantly drops my anxiety um, when I run. But my key takeaways when I was on are Yes, you get bigger and stronger, but my anxiety was through the roof. My run times were getting a lot slower and I would have gotten to the level that I was at without SARMs anyway. So for those reasons, that is why I stopped. That's why I haven't been on that kind of stuff since. And I wanna make things completely clear here. I only took protein and creatine throughout my entire um, pipeline going through selection. And I only did the three month cycle after my second deployment, which was towards the end of my career. So if you guys think you need to be on some sort of performance enhancing drug in order to get through selection and pass, you're completely wrong. That being said, let's take a quick look at how the military treats performance enhancing drugs in the military, as well as what my thoughts are on the matter. Uh, so let's get into that. So recently the Navy has started implementing random steroid testing within the Navy SEAL community. This is because one of their sailors died within their selection due to the overuse of steroids. Now, if SEALs or anything like the 75th Ranger Regiment, I would guess a large population within their ranks are on some sort of performance enhancing drug. Now, despite the unfortunate events that did happen, I do think this is the wrong move for the military. To give us a holistic perspective, let's look at some of the pros and cons of soft members taking performance enhancing drugs. So some of the pros, obviously, you're gonna have a stronger military. People are gonna be passing the standard, not only passing the standard, you're gonna enable some people who may not necessarily been able to prepare uh, fast enough in order to meet the standards for you know, ranger school or selection processes 
to get into the soft community. Obviously the cons being the army are starting to crack down on performance enhancing drugs and by taking them you're putting your career at risk. However that being the case I think that people who want to get their hands on drugs, they, who people who want to get their hands on weapons, they're going to get their hands on this kind of stuff regardless of the law, regardless of the rules. And that is especially true in the soft community where all these dudes are trying to find the edge and become better at their job, more proficient, go with that extra mile. And then obviously the other cons being it's extremely detrimental to your health. These people are just dying because of no reason. If dudes aren't properly educated on the matter and they just go ahead and do it, you know, you can end up in a result like this where people uh, have a significant drop in their health or ultimately they die, right? They're taking years off of their life by taking this stuff. But the other negative aspect of this is that if, army, if the army does crack down on performance enhanced drugs, you're kicking out a significant portion of your special operations and recruitment numbers and retention being as low as they are, looking at it from that angle, it's, it's the wrong move for the military. So what are the solutions to this? Again, the 75th Ranger Regiment, and I assume the soft community as a whole, have a very prominent use of performance enhancing drugs. So if the military thinks that doing all these tests and kicking out all these members is gonna dissuade people from using them, you're wrong. And the army, no matter how many drug tests you do, no matter what you do, all right, you're kicking out your members. You probably don't wanna do that. Soft community has a bad retention already. You probably don't wanna kick those members out. So the army just really needs to just accept the fact that this is the culture. They need to shift their focus from kicking people out to further educating people on the map because it is going to happen regardless of how the military feels about it. A class on how to properly cycle, how to check your blood work, a class like that can go a long way from preventing performance enhancing drug related deaths. And not only that, but you're also strengthening the military as a whole. So that's gonna do it guys. If you guys thought this video was informative in any way, hit the like button to help support the channel. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.